We're going to go over how to write a lab report for your ecology class. I'm Sue Glenn, and uh, really learning how to communicate in whatever field you're working in uh, takes a little bit of time and practice. And the sooner you learn how to uh, write a full uh, scale lab report, the easier it's going to be on you for the rest of your career in science. Uh, so you uh, you're going to get some experience in analyzing your data, uh, framing a hypothesis, um, interpreting data in regards to that hypothesis, um, how to present sort of nice, clear, succinct writing. Uh, you're not going to be adding a lot of extra flowery language in your writing. You're going to stay to the point, and you need to be uh, having everything uh, clearly defined in your writing. Uh, the other thing you're going to be learning to do is ha how to con incorporate other research into your lab report so you can look at uh, other peer-reviewed papers and see what they did, see what they found out, see what hypotheses they were testing. Uh, you know how to uh, do in-text citations, you know how to uh, format references, uh, so we're not going to spend time going over that material. So the, before you even start writing, um, you think about the, the lab that, that uh, you, you're going to write up. Uh, what are the processes? What are the, the big questions did the lab address? What are some things that, did, when you look at that data, uh, what are some conclusions that you can, you can draw from them? Uh, so you, you can start thinking about uh, ways of approaching writing up this lab. And this is probably uh, new to you to ask you to come up with your own hypothesis for uh, testing uh, within your lab report. Uh, one, one thing that's going to help you a lot is to read other papers on the topic. That will give you ideas. And that way uh, you can sort of formulate a nice, clear uh, hypothesis. Doesn't have to be a broad a question can be a fairly narrow question, uh, really trying to get at, at the idea as to what sort of questions um, are, come out of what you were observing. When you're reading the literature, uh, take a look at peer-reviewed papers. Don't just like look on Wikipedia or on websites. Uh, think about the questions uh, that come from that, those other papers and how it relates to what you were doing. Keep track of what you were reading. Um, otherwise, it's going to be difficult to find that paper again if you want to cite it in your lab report. Uh, when there's vocabulary that you're confused by, look it up. Uh, just Google it on your phone or look up whatever reference you're talking about. So list some questions that you think you can test with your data. And, uh, and you are going to need relevant uh, papers in your report. I asked for two peer-reviewed papers related to either the hypothesis or to when you're discussing your results or just and uh, drawing your conclusions. Sections of a lab report, you probably already know this. You've got the title, authors, abstract, introduction, methods, results, discussion, and the references cited. I'm going to uh, go over all of these. There's also a document in, in our, our course on guidelines to lab reports that goes over details on each of these sections. Um, and even though we have the sections in a certain order, when we write, we 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 mix it up a little bit. Uh, first of all, we're going to read other papers, come up with a hypothesis. You're going to uh, graph out your results. You're going to uh, compile the class data into tables, make some graphs, um, and uh, and come up with some descriptions of the those graphs um, that that only deal with your hypothesis. So you don't have to graph all of the data. You don't have to uh, present raw data. You're really looking at the data that is going to directly uh, address the hypothesis. Then we'll work on the methods. Then we'll go to the discussion and introduction. I usually write those around, you know, together going back and forth. Uh, your references, your abstracts, your title and author, and then the fact that you need to um, proofread, you need to probably uh, come up with second and third drafts and maybe send it to others for, for some review. So let's go through this. The hypothesis. You're going to have to uh, state a hypothesis that you can test using your data and uh, it has to be a non-trivial hypothesis so if we went out there and we uh, estimated the population size of bears um, your hypothesis cannot be 
I hypothesize that I could measure the population of a bear. No, you, you need something that you're addressing a, a question and you need something that where there is a control and where is there there is replication in your data so that there has to be enough information there to uh, to actually test this hypothesis. A hypothesis that is nice and simple and clearly written makes everything else easier. So you narrow it down, make sure it's clear what you are measuring, um, what, what you mean by the terminology. So if I say I'm going to test a hypothesis that uh, my, my one of my cats is smarter than the others, I would have to come up with measurable um, indicators of smartness in cats and that's where reading the literature comes in because it helps you identify some of the terms and terminology for some of these broader vague terms. Now you have to be comparing something to something else so if I am saying well I want to see if bees are attracted to yellow flowers and yes I have lots of bees on yellow flowers well that doesn't mean there weren't lots of bees on red flowers and purple flowers and white flowers so you, you're going to need to have a control you need to have replication you can't just use the one yellow flower you looked at you have class data of all the different flowers so you make sure that you have the data to address that particular hypothesis. The results, you're going to be using class data and you're going to compile the results from the class data to test the hypothesis. I don't need a table of all the class data of everything. Uh, what you want to do is um, use your, your data table to make uh, figures that are relevant to your hypothesis. So if I do this, um, uh, so I if I have an independent axis, um, my x-axis that's going to show me uh, different colored flowers and my y-axis is going to show me the number of bumblebees found on the different colored flowers. Uh, so you want to put the figures in the final paper. Sometimes you need the tables because you talk about something in a table because you've calculated something uh, that you didn't put into a figure. Otherwise, if it's the same information, you don't need both. Um, if you want to format and caption the figures and the tables correctly and we'll talk about that in a second and then you have a written out description of the trends you see in the data and uh, you're going to include in that description uh, references to figure one and table one and that way um, you're not including figures or tables that you're not actually talking about in the written uh, trends. So these are not conclusions. This is just, this is what's going on with the data. So we can see there were lots of bees on the yellow flowers and lots of butterflies on the yellow flowers. And uh, uh, you also want to put this all, your whole lab report is, is uh, first person, um, it's going to be active. Uh, this is happening, that's happening. But your, your methods would be uh, definitely going on in past tense. The tables and figures, the purpose of tables and figures is to give a, 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 a visual summary of the data. So you don't want it to look so complex that nobody can figure out what's going on. You want, uh, you really want to make sure that if I'm looking at the uh, number of flowers versus the number of pollinators that uh, I put that in a simple way as opposed to a, a complex way and so you want to just keep them straightforward when you're looking at the tables and figures then you're not using your personal data you're using the class data. So you're going to be submitting your personal data on your lab blog. I'll be able to see what you did. Um, but for the lab report, you're going to actually summarize that into the class data. And uh, you want a caption. So uh, it's going to be a short description caption that explains the abbreviations, the symbols, the lines, the categories. Um, they have to give enough information. Somebody could look at your graph or look at your table and they would be able to know what's going on without having to read the whole paper. So look at the tables and figures in your textbook. Look at those in your in scientific papers. You'll be reviewing a scientific paper and, and you're going to do it the same way. So you're going to put a caption for a figure underneath the figure. You're going to put a caption for a table on top of the table. The methods, you're going to describe what you did, 
where it was, when, and how. Assume the reader doesn't know anything about it. So you want to make sure that you're saying, I did this in South Jersey. Here's the location. I did it in you know, October 2020. Whatever, whatever it is that you did, you need to explain. Um, I compiled the data from the class. I uh, calculated average number of bees per flower from the class data, blah, blah, blah. This is how many samples we had. This is how I, I combined them. Uh, these are the variables I measured. So uh, you want to make sure there's enough details that someone could replicate the study. So um, you, you want to make sure that this is something that you take uh, you take personal responsibility for it, you put it in first person. I did this, I took this, I, I calculated that. Uh, this is a pretty picture. I, I got this off the internet. It was a picture of Iceland and the Icelandic ponies. Ah, wouldn't you like to be there? Now, when you're looking at the introduction and the discussion, so we started, we started with like the hypothesis reading papers and the hypothesis. We've talked about uh, looking at the graphs, then writing the methods. And then now we're going to the hardest part of the paper to write, the first part and the last part, the introduction and the discussion. Um, in these, you want to use your own words. You're going to, uh, in the introduction, you're looking at the context. So uh, why is this hypothesis important? So we're going to look at the uh, sort of overall picture and then um, what the actual hypothesis or objectives of your study were. So what is it that you're testing? Uh, you want uh, like a, a brief line or two. We did this using forests in South Jersey, Southern New Jersey, um, or uh, we did this in, in a park or wherever, just a, a sort of a brief description of what you did. But uh, you know, obviously the details go into the methods. Um, and uh, you can cite appropriate references to set the context for your hypothesis. So I'm testing the uh, hypothesis that uh, bees are going to be more attracted to certain colored flowers based on this research and the pollination syndrome theory, blah, 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 blah. So, um, so the the introduction is really it doesn't have to be super long it's just really giving you the context for your hypothesis do not put in huge blocks of um, quotations from things don't cut and paste from other papers um, you, you know you did that in English class when you wanted to say like this is how Shakespeare said it but uh, nothing that we're using here do we need the exact quote for so you need to paraphrase things put them in your own words in the discussion, you're synthesizing your findings. You're thinking about the major points you want to make. Did the results support or reject your hypothesis? Was you know some was there uh, something that maybe went wrong with it, um, or something that you hadn't thought about before with your hypothesis that uh, comes out of it? So um, you're also going to look at. Uh, references uh, other peer-reviewed papers to illustrate how your results are similar to or different to examples in the literature. So sometimes people use uh, their references in the discussion. Sometimes they use them in, th in the introduction. Sometimes they use them in both places. Um, and it's sometimes difficult to decide where you're going to put something, whether it's going to go in the introduction or the discussion. And that's why I sort of am always going back and forth in these sections. I might start up by writing my introduction, then I go to discuss that thing that I had in the introduction, then I go back and realize, oh, I need to introduce something in the discussion a little earlier on. So this might take a little bit of writing and rewriting uh, for these two sections. The abstract you're writing last, it is not just a copy of your introduction. Um, it's an overview of the major points of the whole lab report. So you can't really write until you know what you're saying everywhere else. Uh, typically, it's uh, 250 to 300 words long. It's summarizing the, the reason for doing the study very, very uh, briefly, what the hypothesis was, what the results were, and what conclusions that you, you drew from that. Um, so look at abstracts of other scientific papers to get a feel for what they were putting in them. And your title needs to be a description of the study you did. It shouldn't just say Mark Recapture Lab or shouldn't should uh, describe 
what your hypothesis is. The influence of flower color on bumblebees in a New Jersey old field or, or in, in, in New Jersey. Uh, so you, you need to make a descriptive title so that people know before reading what it is about. So, and then the authors, if you have anyone else you want to include as an author, put them down as a second author. So let's say you were working on graphs with somebody else and they helped you with the graphs and you guys shared the graphs. I don't mind if you share graphs, but all the words need to be your own. Uh, but get them, give them credit as a second author. Or if if uh, two of you work together outside collecting the data, um, even though you got your own individual uh, data sets, um, you can uh, cite the other person as a second author if you like. All right, um, some tips. Read peer-reviewed papers because that's going to, the more of those you read, the easier it is for you to see how to write a lab report. Uh, I have on your e-learning class a checklist for lab reports. Uh, I use this when I'm grading your lab reports, so you should use this when you're reading your lab reports. So use your checklist, go through, make sure you've done everything on the checklist. Start early. So uh, you can't do this the night before it's due. You're just going to hand in crap and uh, I'm very unlikely to read crap. So uh, start early and uh, don't plan on getting it all right in the first draft. So you're going to have to read it and reread it. Um, I don't want to be the first person on the planet to read your lab report. You should be the first person on the planet to read your lab report. And then uh, get somebody else to help you proofread it so that you can uh, catch things that just don't make any sense. Or Often people will like move things around and they cut and paste and they leave off half a paragraph and things like that. So make sure that uh, you've got it um, carefully proofread. And don't miss the deadline. So. Uh, Put the deadlines for the lab reports, you, you uh, put them in your calendar, put a reminder a, a couple of days before, um, make sure you get them in on time because uh, you're going to be submitting them online and, and you will not have somebody standing in front of you in a class for an online class. Um, if it's an online class, you're going to have to remember to do these things yourself. So in my course, if you do not hand your lab report in on time, you fail the course. So you have to make sure that you get that in on time. Uh, also on e-learning, I made the, another document that uh, has the common mistakes normally found in the first lab report. So uh, read this through because uh, you probably can save yourself uh, some mistakes by going through this first and uh, I'm just trying to to be open with you what I'm looking for so making it very very clear exactly uh, what should be in the, the lab report and, and what people normally um, mess up uh, finally uh, plagiarism uh, you know you cite your sources you write in your own words there should be no reason for plagiarism to happen we shouldn't have to uh, deal with this. Uh, plagiarizing, uh, copying somebody else's lab report and handing your own, it's going to get you a zero for the course. You're going to get reported to the Dean of Students at the Dean of, of STEM. Uh, it'll go on your permanent record. Uh, some schools will kick you out for it. So uh, it's not going to happen. There's no reason for it to happen. You don't learn anything from it happening. So. Uh, we should be fine without any plagiarism, right? I'm looking forward to reading your reports. Reach out to me anytime you're struggling with the report. If you are working on one and you know, don't know if you're on the right track or you don't like your hypothesis, or if you don't know if this graph's any good, uh, contact me. We can Zoom. We can chat. We can uh, go over the report, and uh, that way you, you can uh, figure out what to do. Uh, my policy is on your first lab report, I give you detailed feedback and then if you wish, you can rewrite the first lab report because that is really how you're going to learn uh, is responding to uh, the feedback on the first one. And that, uh, that rewrite is due at the same time as the final lab report is due. So you have the, uh, a bit of time to digest that. It's good to, to go over it thoroughly before you even write the second one. So. Um, Good luck and uh, see those reports.